Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today we're going to continue our basic tutorial for Gary Grigsby's War in the East 2. Now this is part 16 of that tutorial, which gives you an idea of the scope of the game, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, today we're going to be talking about reports and all of the different information that you get in the game. I've had a lot of requests for this one. Uh, you know, go. let's go through the reports and talk about what all of that information means. And I'm going to start, since we start with an air planning and air execution phase, I'm going to start with this report that pops up after air execution. So this is turn one of the grand campaign. Uh, we just I just kept the stock uh, air directives that the uh, is the default on turn one. The game already has these set up and I just ran them through so that this report popped up. And let's just go through it really fast and talk about what all this means. Um, it's your air execution phase summary, okay. Uh, there were 19 air directives that our air forces had. So you see the different commands. Luftflotte 1, Luftflotte 2, 4, Hungarian Air Command, and Romanian Air Command. And those are your five different air commands uh, at the start, at the start. Um, it, then it'll tell you how many sorties you ran, okay, and what are sorties? Well, they're missions, uh, you know, and a mission isn't a big grand order, that is a directive. A mission is the actual individual missions that go out, air groups run them, um, and the game, of course, does a lot of, the, I say does a lot, it follows your directives, but it does the actual sorties themselves, right? So it looks at your directives, decides what you want to do, and then puts the planes together, stages them out of a base, and goes and runs the sortie. So we've run, uh, on turn one here, we ran 6,625 we lost 341 aircraft and we had 161 damage. Then it tells you how many aircraft, uh, enemy aircraft were lost in only air combat, right? So this is turn one. The Soviets actually lost like 2,300 aircraft when the AI did all of this uh, based on its air directives that were the default. Uh, and so this is just showing you what they lost in the actual air, air combat. So we destroyed uh, like 2,100 Soviet planes on the ground. But in the air, we destroyed 220 and 12 were damaged. That's what this is showing you. And that's also what this enemy air lost in damage would show you. If you added that all up, this column, it would be 220 and 12. Uh, but we'll get into that in one second. So air headquarters, again. These are your five air headquarters that you have at the start of the game. The type of directive, okay, and its target, its main target hex. Now, you can, of course, make those uh, zones bigger. You know, you can make them up to 10 hexes, but you always have to specify a target hex. And so it shows you that target hex. It tells you the type of directive, recon, ground attack, ground support. Uh, you know, we went through all of this in the air war. And then for ground support, it'll tell you which army it's actually supporting. Of course, there were no sorties run for that because that happens during the ground combat phase, not during the air execution phase, okay? Here is the uh, quote-unquote general uh, that is in charge of each Luftflotte or air command. And see, you've got five of them. They work just like other generals, generally speaking. Uh, they've got an air score, okay? And they've got an admin score. Those are the two big ones for air generals. And that has to do with how many uh, planes, ready planes, will make it up into sorties, how well they'll get supplied, so on and so forth. Generally speaking, again, I keep saying generally speaking about generals, uh, you don't really change these. Uh, these guys are good. The Luftwaffe ones are good. Seven and seven, eight and seven, and then Kesselring is a, or this is Keller, I'm sorry, is a six and an eight. He's a very good administrator. Uh, Kesselring is like your best, you know, air guy as far as getting uh, planes up and sorties and, and doing all of the air combat. He's got an eight. Max AD, max number of air directives this general can handle, 
okay? And so you can put up to 32 air directives in here. Now you may not wanna do that uh, eventually, but you could, you could. You can do up to 32, all right? Now then, we get into what all of these numbers mean. Um, recon, that's the type, the target hex, where it's staged out of, okay? Insterberg, all right? And how big the area was of this air directive. And so this was a 10 hex, this is the biggest one you can do, 10 hexes. It covered 133 hexes in total, okay? That it went and did this recon in. They flew at an altitude of 15,000 feet. It was during the day. The intensity was low. These are all the things you can set when you set up the air directive. How many AOGs participated in this? So two AOGs participated in this directive. All right. And then two in this recon directive. It looks like the game likes to run two AOGs for each recon air directive. Then we have 12 set up for the ground support, 12 AOGs. Okay. Uh, now this didn't fly, so it doesn't show you what the weather was, but up here, where we did fly sorties, it shows you excellent, 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 okay? Um, raids, all right, uh, th these raids, you can click on this and it'll go down here and show you type on an airfield. So this is kind of the big overall what it tried to do. This tried to hit these, or uh, look over these three airfields. Those were the main missions in this air directive. So you told the game recon, it picked out these three airfields to do recon over. And so you can look at those uh, as kind of like the big overall, you know, what this tried to do. And then it ran how many ever number of sorties, and we'll find out 197 uh, different sorties here, okay? And you can see here, mission escort, all right? How does that play out? Well, as you know, uh, you have escort planes. Your fighters will escort your bombers out, okay? But they don't really escort recon craft, or at least the game doesn't have it set up that way. You could escort recon craft if you decide to do it and you set up your own air directives, uh, but in this case, it did not. So what it's telling you is there were 197 sorties run for these kind of three big overall objectives. And they were all mission, mission, meaning they were recon craft. If any fighters went with them to escort them, then this number goes up. And we'll, we'll get into that in just a second. Lost, how many were lost? Well, 18 mission craft were lost or recon craft and zero escort craft were lost, which makes sense since they, it ran no sorties. Uh, damaged, 11 recon craft were damaged zero escort craft were damaged. And then as part of this, enemy aircraft that tried to meet these recon craft in the air, the enemy lost three planes, uh, completely lost and damaged zero uh, when they tried to intercept this these sorties right here, okay? And then you see execution detail. What does this mean? This means it will show you this when it plays out the uh, kind of the play of the air execution. So, you know, when those blue and red lines go out on the map, uh, that only happens if execution detail is on. If you don't want to see those missions, and the game has it set up that recon missions, you don't really see because it would just take a, a very long time. So in this case, we're not seeing any of those. We're not getting any execution detail, okay? Um, now then, let's go down to ground attack because this actually had a lot more action and we can talk about the escort missions. This ground attack centered on this hex, okay? Its area was uh, supposedly at nine, but it really was hitting uh, just independent or individual hexes. Uh, this came out of Noisadil uh, as the staging base at 15,000 feet. 
Uh, intensity was medium. Okay. Groups, auto. This was set to auto uh, so that the game would pick which units did the ground attack or which air groups did the ground attack. We'll look down here and we'll see the main uh, objectives that it tried to hit. These are each of the airfields. And I think we can click on these and get, you know, it'll show you exactly where those are. Uh, let's get off that. No, I want to go back. I want to go back. Ah, I see. You just go back to the air directive screen. If you So if you click on this airfield here and you want to go out and look at these individual where these airfields were bombed, you can go see that. And once you're there, just go back and click on air directives and it'll take you back to this screen. Um, okay. And so we can see all of the main, uh, you know, objectives, I guess you say. So there's three different levels here. You give it a ground attack directive. The game develops the objectives to <clears throat> carry out your air directive, and then it runs individual missions or sorties to do that, right? And so you can see how many fighters, how many bombers went out on each one of these to these main objectives. And you can see the damage, uh, the effect uh, here, so this effect is on the runway, the air base damage. Um, and you can see each place at Conus, we ran, you know, 48 fighters, 46 bombers in here. Uh, the Soviets lost six fighters, okay. Uh, air base damage, 46 plus 0% at the air base. Uh, but you can see exactly how many Soviet aircraft were lost at each one of these places, even on the ground. Uh, now, this main number up here just shows you how many were lost in the air trying to intercept that. This down here shows you exactly how many were actually destroyed on the ground. You can also see your own losses here for each one of those objectives. All right. And if we keep going across here, though, you see sorties mission. 560. So these are the bombers. All right. These are the actual bombing runs. These are how many sorties that fighters ran to escort them. All right. So, you know, the bombers ran 560 sorties. Sometimes there were multiple escort missions ran. That could be because some planes, some fighters uh, escorted them on the way out and some fighters came and escorted them on the way back right? Uh, or maybe in between somewhere, or it picked them up somewhere along the way to try to escort them back to base. And that's why there are more escort sorties that were run. We lost eight bombers and nine fighters doing this ground attack directive. Uh, 18 bombers, 19 fi uh, fighters were damaged. And the enemy lost nothing try to, trying to intercept these. Sometimes it sends up a big group Sometimes it doesn't, you know, it just, you never quite know uh, what the AI is going to do to try to, to come after these. Now you can see the ground attack at Lublin or that was uh, based out of Lublin that went after 191, 173. Evidently the Soviets sent a lot of fighters to try to intercept that and they lost 76 fighters trying to do that. But you can go down here and you can see this for each different command. As you can see, the Hungarians and the Romanians did not fly any sorties this time around. They all came out of the German Luftflottes uh, and they all tried to hit runways for the most attack, most part. That's what these ground attacks are. They are the runway hits uh, that you try to get on turn one. Every one of these also has a ground support, which again, that is done during the combat, the ground combat phase. They're supporting ground combat units. Okay. So now we're going to get off here. I think we've talked about, you know, what you really need to talk about here. And we're going to talk about combat summaries. Okay, I've now flipped over to our current game that we're playing on the channel, the Let's Play. And for combat summaries, let's go to this button right here, F11. This will give you information on all battles that have happened this turn. 
Okay, so sometimes I think people uh, forget about this button a little bit, but you can always go back. If it goes by too fast, depending on what your message level is, and so there are one to seven on message level. Seven will, uh, and it's the number keys that you have on your keyboard, seven will really give you down to every volley that's fired back and forth between the two armies. That just takes way too long, of course, uh, <laughs> but... Uh, six, you know, is too long as well. I usually play on two. Uh, when you're first starting out, I would say either play, maybe play on three because it will show you quite a bit of information on three, but it's not overwhelming. It doesn't take like an hour to give you an entire battle. Uh, I now play on two. I think two is a good number. It gives you, uh, you know, some information. Uh, it gives you kind of the meat and bones of the battle, uh, but it doesn't just take forever. Now you'll see when you hit F11, You've got tanks out here, and it'll show two, meaning there were two battles fought in this location this turn. You can also see air here, where there was an air battle. Uh, let's go up here. You can see there were lots of ground battles fought here. This is the recon symbol, so it's possible that there was a recon flight here, and indeed there was, or a utility flight. This could be a transport uh, that the Soviets tried to bring supplies up here, but you can see they lost three utility planes um, you know, trying to, to fly up here for whatever reason that they were. So that's utility planes, whereas this is like uh, bomber type missions, okay? So there is a differentiation there. But let's just, I don't know, let's just pick here and let's see what happened in this hex. Now you'll notice up here, it says one of two. And I know that this has caused some confusion with people because they say, hey, where's the other battle? It's right up here. You can flip back and forth between the two of them. But let's look at one of two. This happened in turn nine. Okay, that's the current turn. If you look over here, we're in turn nine. Uh, it happened on August 17th, 1941. So this is, a, this is fresh. This is just this last turn. August, or during this current turn, August 17th, 1941, you can see the ground conditions, which were light mud, and it was raining, okay? You can see the hex number and the terrain. It was in light woods, all right? The attacker. The attacker was the Germans, or the Axis here, and you can see their raw combat value. When they came into the battle, the 93rd Infantry Division had a raw combat value of 36. And it'll always show you these in parentheses here, the raw combat value of whatever forces are in here. And we'll go look at one that had multiple forces in a minute. Uh, but for now, you see it's got a 36, okay. Once that went through all of the witch's brew and you, you, know, you put the ingredients in and it came out a cake, you had a, an adjusted combat value of 10. Now, why might that have been? Well, Weisenberger maybe missed uh, one of his uh, roles or general checks. That's possible. It could be because you're fighting in light mud and rain, which is never good for an attacker. Um, it, it could be these guys were tired. They didn't have enough combat prep points. There's all sorts, all of those things we talk about that go into combat. Take that 36, brrr, it puts it in here in the algorithm, and it cuts, comes out a 10, okay? And so look, going into this battle, the Germans had a raw combat value of 36. The Soviets had a 41. They ended up at 6. And so they, you know, they ended up even worse off. They probably have a worse general. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of things that go into it. But 10 and 6, that's what the game decides this battle on not the raw, but you do see the raw just to see, you know, what you started with, what you came out with. This is how many men participated in the battle. This is how many men you lost, 145, if you're playing the Axis anyway, 145. This is how many guns participated and you lost five. How many AFVs participated? Then you have fighters, bombers, and utility airplanes. That, you know, if you have ground support on, Often you will get planes that participate. You know, the fighters escort the bombers out there. The bombers bomb the Soviet troops. Uh, and you will get losses here 
represented in exactly the same way. And then you see that for the Soviets, okay? They lost 245 men out of the 11,000 that participated in the battle. They lost seven guns. The original fort level was one. Now, we, I, I guess in the Let's Play, I don't often talk about fort levels anymore after turn one. That is this button here, and you can see fort levels, all right? And now we've broken that one down, likely, because that's the first thing you have to do in a battle. That could also be why our, um, our adjusted went from 36 to 10, because we're running into a fort level. Now, that does not mean they actually have, you know, like a brick-and-mortar fort out there or a concrete fort. It means that they had built natural fortifications in that hex that uh, up their defensive value and, and make us try to break that down first. You often do that with pioneers or engineers. They're good at breaking down these fort levels, all right? And so again, over here on the Soviet side, you can see the exact same uh, sort of numerical breakdown of raw value to adjusted combat value okay over here you see 53rd core and with the asterisk means that was the uh, sort of main group that was uh in charge weisenberger was in charge he commands 53 core that's got the asterisk it, it's kind of almost like the flagship right this was the main core that uh, was present here now in this case we didn't have any others so of course it was and out of 53rd so it always lists the core the bigger group that they're part of that the general is in command of he's in command of 53rd core it was 93rd Infantry Division, which is part of 53rd Corps, that actually participated in the battle. Again, that's their raw combat value. Uh, OKL, now this would be if any planes were involved, and you see Ermin Goering there. Uh, yeah, anyway, um, there were no planes here, though, so you see nothing. If uh, the Soviets would have had planes involved, they would have come from Leningrad Air Command, but again, they had no planes involved either. You see a, a kind of a, you know, odds here as if you went to Vegas and you're playing blackjack. You see, we had an advantage of 1.7 to 1. How, how do they figure that? Well, that's 10 to 6, right? 1.7 to 1. And you need at least 2 to 1. If you get 2 to 1 odds, the enemy will either retreat route, shatter, or surrender, all right? The closer it is to two to one, uh, now if it's 1.7 to one, or you know 1.99 to one or less, they don't move, they don't move, they hold, all right? Now in this case, they were scouted because Weisenberg, Weisenberger passed his role, his initiative role, and, they, and the Germans pulled back before they got into a full-fledged battle here. That's what the scouted means. Now you can also hit click here and show all of the details. Units in the battle, on map units that were in the battle, support units, ground headquarters. These were all one, you know, 53rd Corps was the ground headquarters. The unit in battle was the 93rd Infantry Division. These are down to the elements. How many total elements did uh, the Germans have involved here? 1152. So that gets down to the individual uh, squadrons, the individual bazooka teams. I mean, that gets down to the granular level of ground elements. And in this case, they had 1152. Uh, damaged 114. Uh, 1266 were in total, okay, uh, that are participated in total. They have the average morale of 73. They had an average experience of 75. Now, you will not see that for the Soviets because of fog of war, right? You see all of this other information, you know, how much, you know, the Germans could determine, well, shoot, I don't know, how many rifle squads do you think they had? Well, around 763. Well, it's probably, you know, it's not quite that exact, but you get the idea. They would know basically the strength of the Soviet force after fighting a battle against them. Uh, you can see the air missions, how many were run here. You know, it shows you, and you can see the fatigue was 64. That's probably a big reason for that drop because fatigue will really, really hurt you. Now you can also uh, click on here and it will show you destroyed and damaged, all right? Or you click off and it shows you just the raw destroyed. Um, 
ground losses, you can go here and see literally every element that you lost. So Rifle Squad 40, we lost five of those on the ground. Uh, we lost four of them during the retreat. So we scouted, right? We scouted into that hex. We came back to our hex and we lost some units because of that, okay? Uh, how many were damaged and how many were disrupted? Now, disrupted's not something you see often because in this game, you you know, in some war games, disruption is right up front. You know, they, they tell you disruption so important. Um, we don't think about it as much in Grigsby games, but it is a thing. It happens. And it's actually why artillery is effective. Because if we go look at a battle where artillery, let's just go find one, where artillery was present. So let's just look at this one. Okay. And we'll look at ground... Uh, general info disrupted yeah we had a Werfer battalion okay well that's not straight up artillery that's like rockets uh oh and this is a good chance to tell you so Heinrich is in charge of the 43rd Corps uh 131st division is part of you know 43rd Corps it was what participated in the battle it also had two support units that participated in the battle we had the 84th Luftwaffe Motorized Light Flak Battalion that added three raw combat value. And we had the one layer Werfer Battalion, which is a rocket battalion that added one. And you may say, gosh, these support units don't matter then, really, do they? Don't worry, well, not so much, at least with AA, artillery. Don't worry about the raw combat value it's showing you because they actually do other things in combat. So the AA here is anti-aircraft. They're trying to shoot down planes. They're not trying to add to the combat value on the ground, right? And so the fact that they even add three is pretty impressive because they're an anti-aircraft uh, battalion. So they're shooting up in the air. They're not going to help you with raw combat value. It's kind of the same idea with artillery or rockets. They're not necessarily adding to the combat value. What they're trying to do is disrupt the other army because when the other army gets disrupted, then your land units have a better or easier job of defeating them um, with their combat value. So what it really does is it lessens the combat value of your opponents and so we see here 70 down to six a big part of that could have been the fact that we hit them with these rockets and it made their their it made their disruption go up so their raw combat value their base combat value went down because of artillery so it's not adding to ours it's subtracting from theirs and just remember that in respect of artillery rockets what you're really trying to do is disrupt the enemy and make their combat value go down all right let's find a battle where we had multiple units that fought um, and you can see here support units right there uh, so it always lists all the support units now surely we had some out here where we fought with more hey there's one okay so now we've got all that same information, right? We've got uh, the men and it adds them to, it adds all of them together, no matter how many units participated. This is a an aggregate, okay? And then we did have planes involved here. So the Luftwaffe sent planes. Our adjusted combat value though was only one. So it was 34 down to one. The Soviets were 91 down to one, wow. You know, a lot of bad things happened out here betwixt and between getting from raw combat value to adjusted combat value. You see that the uh, 39th Motorized Corps was the flagship of this. Well, it was the only corps involved. This also tells you which general would get credit for the win or the loss, all right? This asterisk means it is the main commanding force. So 
if we had another motorized core out here and this had the asterisk, it's Schmidt that would get credit for the win or the loss, which becomes important at some point uh, down the line as the uh, ge the Germans start pulling generals off the front uh, of their own devices. But there were two units we had out here. We had the 20th Motorized Division, which gave us a raw of 18. They had light flak because they're shooting up into the air. We had the 18th Motorized Division, which gave us a raw of 14. They had anti-tank. They had motorized mixed flak heavy cannon again you would look at this and you say gee heavy cannon and heavy howitzer gave us zero right well maybe not maybe that's why 91 went down to one you know so again they're trying to lessen the defender value but you can see all of the support units underneath here then you can see the Luftflotte that got involved in this was under Kesselring. He's the uh, Air General of Luftflotte II. We had 32 JU-88As involved, 18 BF-110Es, and 17 109F2s. All right, we had 17 fighters, 50 bombers. We lost five fighters and we lost one bomber. All right, so it shows you all that. We could go down here, and we already kind of talked about this. It shows you the averages. We have a huge average morale experience, but also fatigue. And that's likely why 34 went to one, because these guys are absolutely worn out. We had air missions. We had 50 bombing air missions and 17 cap, which is escorting or fighters flying over the top uh, to protect the unit or to escort the bombers. Uh, how many ground elements were destroyed for both us and the Soviets? How many men, just you know, individual men uh, were hurt uh, on the ground, in the ground combat, air combat, and during the retreat, because again, we only scouted. We tried to go into that hex. We said, nope, they're stronger than we thought, and we pulled back, okay? Uh, you can see how many were disrupted. This is how we went down that path about artillery, and you can see we had 1,700 disrupted. They had 2,800 men disrupted out of 13,000, so our artillery really hit them hard, you know? Uh, ground losses, we could see, you know, what did we lose here? Uh, we lost like 17 total motorized rifle squads out of the 370 that were in the battle. We see how many are damaged. We see how many are disrupted. So obviously they shot some artillery at us too uh, and got us a little disrupted. Now, what does this mean right here? 105th Tank Division R. This 105th Tank Division was in reserve mode, and this general committed them to the battle. And that's very powerful on the defense, right? It can happen on defense. Within six hexes, the Soviets can call in another unit to participate in the battle. And that's what they did here. They called in the 105th Tank Division. So when we made this attack as the Axis, we thought we were just fighting the 151st Rifle Division. We're like, okay, we stack up well with them. Uh, no, they brought in a tank division. And that's why we said, uh, nope, uh, we'll see you later. Uh, we went back to our hex. Um, ground combat, you can see Every, you know, if you want to go down this road, you can see he hits, AP hits, read the rule book about what the difference is there. I mean, the basic difference is, is from a distance or closer in uh, air losses. We can see exactly what we lost here. And these were operational losses. So air to air, flak, operational or on the ground. So we, you know, obviously didn't. They got up in the air. They weren't lost on the ground. Flak, no Soviet flak got to us, and no Soviet aircraft. They didn't even have any aircraft here. Uh, we lost these all because of operational. You know, that could be because we don't have enough support on our airfield. It could be because the mission was a long ways out in its range. Uh, or it could just be because operational losses happen. Uh, air combat. You can get a total breakdown of the mission that these things were on, their skill level, the altitude they were flying at, uh, how many kills, how many losses, how much damage they had. You can see all that. You can even see their loadouts. If you want to see what each different uh, item that was loaded on the plane did during the battle, you can see it here. It's really quite incredible. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Okay, so that is combat 
uh, summaries. Again, you got all this up here. This was in the clear ground, but it was raining in the light woods. They had a fort level of one. If we do have engineers out here, it will show you our engineer level. The higher, the better. If there are forts, you could see all that. Okay, let's go to info screens and let's go talk about the commander's report. Uh, the most important part of the game. Well, before we do that, actually, I do want to go back to one of these headquarters. Uh, oh, let's get off F11. Let's go to move. If you ever have a problem doing something in the game, go up here and make sure you're on move mode, F1, because that's when you can do, you know, select things and do everything. If you're on any other mode, uh, even down to like the railroad mode, you can't do anything and it gets frustrated. You're like, what's going on? Always go back to move mode. Okay, let's go to this headquarters. This is Heinrike, okay, General Guth Gothard Heinrike. Uh, but let's go to the back of his card with a right click. Um, and let's go look at this button right here. This is a very important button. I think I don't use it enough, and I think other people don't use it enough. Show subordinates. What does this do? It takes us to the commander's report screen. All right. But this is a very specific one off the back of his card, which shows you his entire core. Uh, and only his core. So if you want to go look at an individual core, you come here, 43rd core, it's German, its size is triple X, core, type, core. Uh, it's part of Fourth Army. This is its direct. And then you see all the other things we see here are 43rd core. What theater box is it in? Okay, it's on the map. Uh, all of 43rd Corps is distance to its headquarters, and you can see that for the divisions, all right, and for the Corps itself, because this reports up to 4th Army. It's only two um, away. Uh, how many men are in each of these? Now I should go back. So 43rd Corps is made up of four divisions. It's got the 131st, the 134th, the 252nd, and the 260th division. Now, what's interesting is, is because this fought a battle this time, it's kind of showing, uh, it's showing the support units up here. But in green, you see every support unit that you have in 43rd Corps, all right? And you can even see here, battalions are done by the two Roman numerals II. Those are battalions, all right? And then you can see what type they are, AA, engineering, so the Pioneer Battalion is engineering, Werfer, rocket. We have, what, five artillery, and then we have self-propelled guns. The Stug and the Panzerjäger uh, are self-propelled. These are both anti-tank, really. Well, the Stug is actually anti-infantry. Uh, it's just a big, big gun. It almost looks like a tank, uh, but it's not really, it doesn't have that kind of armor. Uh, the Panzerjägers are, you know, good for anti-tank. Then you can see how many men each of these uh, units have, down to the support units, how many guns, how many AFVs. Uh, supply priority, you can see the supply priority. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Ooh, uh, AC. Oh, aircraft. Aircraft in the unit. Okay, well, there's none in here, right? But if we had an air headquarters up here, you would see aircraft. Uh, morale. You can see the morale in each unit. And that goes down to the support unit level. We don't often talk about that, but the support units have their own morale. They have their own experience. And then you see the fatigue. Uh, 131st Infantry is really tired. All right. Here is the raw combat value of each unit. Uh, here, including the support units and the number of prep points they have. All right. You can see the percent of their TOE that they currently have. And so these support units, the heavy cannon, have a full 100%. Uh, some of these support units are doing pretty well. Meanwhile, that super heavy howitzer is down to 60%. We need more super heavy howitzer. Uh, it's like more cowbell, right? This is the uh, TOE that you have them set at. Now, as time goes on, as the Germans, you may lower some of the support units to like 80% so that your main divisions are getting filled out and stuff isn't going, you know, to the support units at the same level. Okay. You can see the status. And if we wanted to, 
We could put them on refit, reserve, or ready. We could see the supply priority of this core. It's currently a two. You could see the withdraw turn. All right, and so some of these, including the support units, will withdraw to the destination of these other theater boxes. In this case, in turn 114, this howitzer battalion is going to Italy. Uh, okay, um, TTOB to, oh, this is how many turns it's going to be until their order of battle changes. So in turn 16, we're going to get an order of battle change for all of the infantry divisions. What does that mean? Well, let's go out to the division. And you may remember that these elements, right, they change over time. And so you have a basic template that this thing is set at, but then it will upgrade and it will upgrade on its own. It's not like you have to do anything. In uh, On turn 16, this will upgrade to the next one. It'll probably actually be 1941 one. Um, and so that will then change over and that's what that's telling you on that report. Let's go back to it right there, show subordinates. Um, so that's how many turns until it's OB or order of battle uh, changes over. This is elite status. Does something have an elite status? Uh, well, these units do. The Luftwaffe motorized light flak are, you know, their elite status is Luftwaffe. Uh, you know, does it really change much? I mean, I don't know. You see the raw values here, uh, but this is just telling you it's part of the Luftwaffe from a command perspective, sort of. I mean, ultimately, Heinrike and the 43rd Corps command them. Uh, but they are a Luftwaffe group or battalion. Um, how many won or lost battles each one of these units has participated in? So overall, the 43rd Corps is 7 and 2, uh, but you can see each individual element. This element, since it came over here, the heavy howitzers, is 6 and 0. Oh. They've been doing really well since the heavy howitzers got in here. Uh, so you can see that. Okay, so that is um, kind of your individual commander's report down to the core, and then everything under it level. So we get all the way down to the support level. You can also see all of this stuff about their supply. You can see how, you know, the men, this is all kind of the same. But when we get over here, instead of showing you the morale and the experience and the fatigue, it shows you uh, the support, okay? Fuel percentage, fuel requirement, ammo percentage, ammo requirement, vehicle, so on and so forth down here. Uh, and you can see exactly how the supply is playing out down to the support unit level. You could also transfer things from here, transfer units to the map or back to the reserves. You can reset the supply priority of this core. You can set the max TOE for everything. If we wanted to take everything down to 90%, we could do it there. Uh, refit reserve. This just allows you, and let's go back to main. This allows you to do it for all of them at the same time. So instead of you, you know, changing each one of these individually, you could do it, you know, the whole group. We're going to put all of 43rd Corps into refit, let's say, or back into reserve, or you could disband them if you want to. It also shows you the breakdown of all of 43rd Corps. It is 72,000 men, 849 guns, 37 AFVs. Um, now then, that was the unit, the individual unit, and we had it filtered. What, if you ever get to one of these screens and you're like, gosh, I can't get off of this. I don't know how to do it. Always go down here to the filter area and you can look, sort, do, I mean, you can do anything with this data if you spend enough time doing, you know, looking around here and filtering and sorting. But if you ever have a filter on, just, you know, clear all filters and it'll bring everything up. And we start at OKH. And so you can see the Germans here, well, the Axis, I guess, have 7.2 million men under arms, 68,000 guns, 6,000 AFVs, and 3,000 aircraft. 
okay? You can look at every unit, including the support units, in the game on your side from this screen. And, you know, we just went over what all of this information means. It's all the same right up here. You can filter for each different thing. You can sort from top to bottom for each different thing. Uh, you can see I've got some of these units. Let's sort for TOE because I always like to do that. Um, and now you say, oh, gosh, I've got the air bases on here. I don't care about them. Okay, let's take the air bases off there. Excellent. Now you're like, oh, now it's got all the support units out here. I don't want to see those. Okay, let's go click off support. There we go. Ooh, let's go click off support, he said. Um, support, off. Okay. Now, he eh, kept some of them on here. Why did it do that? Uh, some of these are multi-transfer. Let's take the ones that are off map. So that's the theater box. Let's take them out. And now you can see what we really want to get down to are divisions, brigades, and you can look down here. These are the actual counters on the map. If you take off support, off map, and air bases, you will see everything that's on the map. Now you can see the 106th Infantry Division's in bad shape. It's only got 36% of its TOE. The Romanian, this Romanian brigade's at 39%. You know, we need to put some of these on refit, and we'll do that when it comes to the Let's Play. Uh, <laughs> believe me, I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh, I got to go back and fix some of these because we're getting awful low on percent TOE. Let's just go look at the 106th uh, division and see what's going on. All right, it will take you out here to it. There it is. Uh, it's not looking too strong here, guys. 36% on the TOE. Uh, now, what is this? 36% are ready. Ready plus damaged, because they may filter back in, is 55. We have it set for 100, okay? Uh, we're a long ways from that. They're just not getting uh, replenished because they're kind of way out here. They fought a lot of battles. Uh, you can see it's part of Sixth Corps and so on and so forth. Um, but if we look at these ground elements, their fatigue, 99 I mean, these guys just need to take a rest, right? You see the ground elements, how many we have ready? 78. 71 of those are damaged, these rifle squads. They've taken an absolute beating out here. But you can see all of that on the info screen under the commander's report. And I like to go in here and put on refit, which means they get priority for replacements. Uh, anything that's under 70%. Now, we're far enough down the road in the war here that's going to be too many units. You can't put everything on refit, right? Because it's almost as if you have nothing on refit. Uh, but anything under probably 65% at this part of the war will put on refit. And you could do that directly from here. You can just click right there, put it on refit, done. Now it's going to have priority for replacements over other infantry units that are on ready. All right, um, you can go up here and just sort by your headquarters and you can see who the leader is, their support level, how many combat units they um, command, how many support units are underneath them, how many command points they have, supply priority, how many units are frozen, uh, the makeup here um, of their... Uh, you can see the makeup of their groupings here, so OKH has 2.7 million men. You can also set uh, the support level at a big overall picture here if you want to, or supply priority. You can do that, who their headquarters is. Uh, they have a lot of the same stuff for the air. Uh, you know, you can do the upgrades. You can change that from auto to manual. Replacement, normal. Experience, morale, f fatigue. Um, ready, reserve, damage. You can go see all of this at the air group, AOG, pilot, pilot list level. Uh, how many kids do? Yeah, we've got some aces. Uh, wow, this guy <laughs> has got 36 kills, but he's captured. Oh, well, gosh, I didn't even know that. I wish I would have known that. This, uh, you can't click on him, but he's part of JG52. He's got 36 kills on 24 missions, but he's now been captured by the Soviets. Wow, that's crazy. I didn't, I haven't even looked at any of this. Uh, we've got several captured actually uh, of our, we've got a lot of aces. Look how many kills. Look at some of these guys. 
a lot of aces. Uh, but you can see the pilot list. You can see the number of pilots and how much training some of them have. We have 441 pilots captured if you were wondering. You can also look at the individual AOGs, what they're flying, if they're upgrading normally, or if you're doing it manually, uh, replacements, so on and so forth. So just play around with this commander's report. You can literally find anything, anything in the game. You can find it on your commander's report. One last thing I'll point out, don't forget if you're more of a visual person, you can go look here at the graft uh, we'll go, I'll go back up there. This graph right here on the info screens, you can go up here and see a lot of stuff, like big overall numbers, like victory points, manpower losses, etc. You can see that here on this more visual graph screen. And with that, I think I'll bid you adieu. Uh, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Hopefully you found this helpful and maybe a little entertaining. I don't know. It's all spreadsheets, damn it. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for joining me. This is Strategy Gaming Dojo, and I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.